With more on this groundbreaking discovery, we turn to one of The Daily Show's newest correspondents at the Kennedy Space Center. Please welcome Roy Wood Jr., everyone. Thanks, Trevor. Roy, uh, what can you tell us about these new developments? I can tell you that I don't give a shit. <laughs> okay. Seriously, Roy? I mean, this is a pretty big deal. Look, man, every couple of years on Mars, NASA finds a face in the dirt, a tire track, and now they found a little Martian runoff water, Trevor? They want us to be excited about mother water? <laughs> Roy, Roy, think of what water on Mars means to us here on Earth, man. This, this could be a whole new inhabitable planet. We could build colonies. No, 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 leave Mars alone. <laughs> Trevor, the universe is like an apartment complex, okay? And NASA's just going around knocking on random doors, letting themselves in. What, because the faucet works? <laughs> We're allowed to live there? Look. Yeah, yeah, but Roy, let's think about this. Doesn't this raise the possibility that one day people could live on Mars? People like who? <laughs> like me, me and you? How, how am I get there? Brother can't catch a cab. You think we can catch a spaceship? <laughs> no, no, Roy. Roy, that's wrong. That's wrong. We're deserving as anyone. Black people ain't going to Mars. <laughs> and that includes you, Trevor. Oh, 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 oh. You think because you're on TV, they're going to take you to Mars. <laughs> You've only had The Daily Show for one commercial break. These white folks ain't decided if they like you yet. <laughs> I'll tell you, though. I'll tell you which black people are going to Mars. I'll tell you who's going. Beyonce, Oprah, and Michael Strahan. Oh, wait. <laughs> really? Michael Strahan? White people have anything Kelly Ripper likes. <laughs> I see. So... So you don't ever want to go to Mars? Okay, fine. Maybe eventually, but I don't want to go first. You don't ever want to be the first black person. To be in a black pioneer is stressful. I don't want to be the Jackie Robinson of Mars. <laughs> Bunch of Martians yelling the N-word at me. How did they even learn the word? Uh, Roy, that's, that's a mess, General Don't say that, Roy. That's wrong. For more on this, we turn to new Daily Show correspondent, Desi Lydic, everyone. <laughs> Desi. It's hard to fathom that ISIS makes so much money selling antiques on the black market in America. It's actually disgusting. That's right, Trevor. It's awful how ISIS can fuel their campaign of destruction by selling off the region's greatest treasures. Treasures like this smart little item that Hassan is displaying for us. Hassan, <laughs> what can you tell us about this piece? Well, Desi, this is a beautiful statuette of Aglabal, the lunar fertility god. Ooh, fertility god. I do not need one of those. <laughs> I'm very fertile. <laughs> you are. Yeah, you are. Now, how much would someone expect to pay for an irreplaceable piece of civilization like this? Well, on the market, this could go for as much as $380,000. Yeah. <laughs> but right now, we're selling it today for not three, not two, but just $140,000. <laughs> That's a steal. It literally was. Uh, I'm sorry, guys. Hassan, Desi, sorry, but this is exactly the problem. Sales like this create a market for ISIS to exploit for higher and higher profits. That's absolutely right. The money you spend on items like this go right back into destroying more historic sites like Palmyra. Which means if you buy this piece now, it is almost guaranteed to go up in value. <laughs> That's just a smart investment. Yeah, yeah, but guys, but guys, these are priceless pieces of history and you're selling them for next to nothing. That's right, Trevor. <laughs> and if you act now, you get the complete Palmyrian trinity. I'm talking about Aglabal, whom we've met already, along with Bell, the co-supreme, and the solar nimbus Yarbal, Lord of the Spring. And that's not all. We'll also throw in this fresh bowl of blessed shaman blood. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. <laughs> Mm. That's real blood, folks. <laughs> Guaranteed to triple in value. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm sorry, Down did you say triple in value? That's right. And this is an opportunity you do not want to miss. Call now. <laughs> oh, oh, sorry, not me. Here to help is one of The Daily Show's newest members, senior technology correspondent, Ronnie Chang, everyone. <laughs> Thanks, Trevor. Thanks. For decades, we've been hearing about virtual reality, the immersive computer simulator technology that could help us do incredible things, like perform surgery from across the country or seduce giant blue cheetah women. 
Now, after billions of dollars in research and development, virtual reality is finally ready to show us what it can do. Imagine you are at a performance of the Los Angeles Philharmonic Orchestra, but not in the audience. Instead, you're in the middle of the action. That's the experience the LA Phil want to bring to the world with the new virtual reality app. Yeah, a classical music concert. Great. <laughs> now I get to be bored out of my mind from the comfort of my own home. <laughs> I can't wait until they come out with a virtual reality flight delay simulator. Oh, cool, we're tenth in line for takeoff. I guess I'll just take out this crossword puzzle in this virtual in-flight magazine. Oh, someone already filled it out with pen? What a virtual dick. <laughs> Come on, science, this is virtual reality. We can go anywhere. How about one where you can travel around the world and I don't know, go deep sea diving and your dad says he's proud of you. You know, the, <laughs> the possibilities are endless. Uh, wait, wait, Ronnie, what did you say about your dad? Unfortunately, Trevor, <laughs> the current options for virtual travel are a little underwhelming. Hotel giant Marriott is getting in on the action using VR technology to showcase their properties. Let's, let's take a trip to China. Wow, so I'm wow. in a square. Oh, this dude's right in front of me talking. Looks like he's got some breadsticks right in front of me. There's a gentle wind blowing, and I know that from the flag above me. Ah, oh, my tour is coming to an end. Yeah, great. I've always wanted to go to China and stand there for 10 seconds. Yeah, I saw the flag, I saw the sidewalk, I saw the great dude of China. I don't know, it's like I don't have to go anymore. But you know what, Ronnie, it seemed pretty impressive to me. It looked like you could reach out and touch that guy. Yeah, exactly. It's just some guy. That's not my dad. <laughs> why, why would your dad... But Trevor, it's not all fun and games, all right? <laughs> there are also practical applications for virtual reality. Virtual reality has been tried before in football. It has never worked until now. There are limits in college on how much time players can spend on the field. There are no limits to how much time they can spend alone uh, with a virtual reality headset. We did it. We found another way to exploit college athletes. Yeah. It's great. Yeah. Now they can take a break from football practice with more football practice. Come on, these guys get enough football already. They should be using virtual reality to experience something they'll never get to see, like a paycheck from the NCAA. Oh, Ronnie, I mean, uh, it sounds like nothing's good enough for you, man. Yeah, I know. Now I know how my dad feels, am I right? <laughs> but actually, that's not completely true. There is one kind of virtual reality that I think we can all appreciate. I'll give you a hint. It rhymes with corn, and you can jerk off to it. Just when you thought the multi-billion dollar porn business couldn't get any bigger, enter virtual reality. You can head over to the gentleman's club and you can be, go on stage to give a pole dance. If you get a lap dance, uh, the girl is, you know, right on your lap and she's moving and gyrating. The, the experience is, is remarkably real. Yeah, finally! This is what virtual reality should be. Yeah, check out those geometric curves. So hard and angular. <laughs> Ronnie, I don't understand. Why are you getting so excited about these graphics? I mean, why not just watch real people have sex on video? Well, sure, that'd be great. And hopefully we'll live to see the day where that technology is possible. <laughs> but you know what, Trevor? I was so inspired by the potential of virtual reality that I went out and I made my own program. One that I think could even be more popular than porn. Check it out. I know I don't say this much, but I love you, son. I'm so proud of you. Let's go stand in China together. I love you too, Dad! I love you too! Uh, thank, thank, thanks. <laughs> For more on this deep division, please welcome to the show our newest Daily Show correspondent, Mr. Michael Costa. Uh, well, thanks, Trevor. It's great to be here, but just so you know, it's actually Dr. Michael Costa now. Wait, wait, you, you're an actual doctor? Yeah, yeah, yeah. According to medicalcertificateonline.com, I am, so oh, that's, a, that's, that's a blank. Now, Trevor, as a professional doctor, <laughs> I'm here to prescribe a cure for America's division, a spoonful of optimism. It may seem that Americans are being driven apart, but plenty are coming together. Take right-wing conspiracy theorist Alex Jones. He runs InfoWars. I was told by a genetic engineer 
about a project they were on in England once, and I never told the story on air because it's so fantastical. They had in tanks people with gills, and they were little babies, and they were in there just gulping, clawing at the sides. You see a turtle at the zoo, and it wants out, and you feel for it. They got humanoids crossed with fish and stuff. I mean, we are screwed, people. I mean, do you understand that? Humanoids cross with fish, so mermaids. You hate mermaids? <laughs> Who hates mermaids? Now, you wouldn't think that guy has much in common with, say, Hollywood Gwyneth Paltrow, the founder of Goop. That's her website where she markets an alternative brand of wellness that for some reason her followers pay actual money for. I've always been that person who um, has sort of introduced the culture or the media to things that people think are weird. I usually make my own smoothie with a lot of different moon juice powders. There's great proteins and adaptogens and things to help with adrenal fatigue and for beauty. Perhaps nothing is more interesting than the TMI topic of vaginal steaming, which Goop endorsed in January. <laughs> wow. Vaginal steaming? That phrase is both too much information and somehow not enough information. <laughs> Well, it's pretty clear to me, frankly. Oh, oh, okay, but I'm confused. Why are we talking about Gwyneth Paltrow and Alex Jones? Because they show us how not divided America is. You think they have nothing in common, but they do. On both their websites, they push a lot of the same strange dietary supplements. The exact same supplements. They just market them differently. Take maca, a supplement that's said to increase sex drive, which I bought but do not need. Now... <laughs> On Goop, you can find maca in their moon juice sex dust. But on InfoWars, it's super male vitality. <laughs> Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. <laughs> Both sites also recommend alternative remedies like active silver, oothothero root, and deboned salmon enemas. Okay, I made that last one up, but <laughs> we all know when you lose the bones, you lose the health benefits. Okay, okay, okay Michael. Dr. Um, Costa. So, so Gwyneth Paltrow puts the same herbs in her green smoothies as Alex Jones puts on his pizza steaks, but I still don't understand what this has to do with a divided America. Oh, well, of course not. You don't have a medical degree. <laughs> now, <laughs> Trevor, do you know what this is? A horseshoe? Wrong. This is a symbol of a political theory named the horseshoe theory of politics. Now, it states the far left and the far right, rather than being at opposite ends of a linear political continuum, in reality closely resemble one of another, much like the ends of a horseshoe. So it's actually a horseshoe. So <laughs> Gwyneth is here, Alex is here, pretty close. In fact, the extreme fringes have a ton in common. Both don't believe in vaccines. Both think 9-11 was an inside job. Both like birds. You know, when you think about it, the movie Birdman, isn't that really just a fancy Duck Dynasty? Uh, what? Birdman is nothing like Duck Dynasty. The point is, maybe we can all learn from the extremes and focus on what brings us together. A healthy skepticism of authority and, well, a powdered drink that gives you boners, okay? <laughs> I mean, if it'll bring us together in America. Oh, no, 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 don't, don't drink that. That kicks in immediately. What are you doing? What, so I'm gonna, what, what? Uh, Trevor, we gotta get you out of here. That's, that, no. Oh, we get, let's go. You gotta go. You gotta go. I don't, I don't, I don't, I can't stand up. Please welcome to the show our newest Daily Show correspondent, Dulce Sloan, everybody. Trevor. Yes, it's fashion week. And while we'll see some new looks, some things will never change. For example, we know at least one model will fail at her only job, walking <laughs> down the runway. And that some designer's gonna try to sell us clothes they fished out of a dumpster. But the thing mm, that gets the most attention every year is the cultural appropriation. That never goes out of style. Well, uh, Dulce, for people who don't know, can you explain what cultural appropriation is? Sure. It's when you take something that defines the culture that you're not a part of and profit off of it. The fashion industry does it all the time. They take from black culture, Native Americans, Asia, you name it. I mean, the models even appropriate their body dimensions from the aliens in Close Encounters. <laughs> Yeah, 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 but, but Dulce, to be fair, not all instances of cultural appropriation are that extreme. Well, yeah, that's true. Not every person who listens to rap or wears a kimono or sings the chorus to Despacito 
is trying to steal someone else's culture. Well, that's good to hear because I, I love singing Despacito. Well, you can definitely sing it because you know you look like a Puerto Rican. <laughs> Hola. <laughs> but sometimes it crosses the line. Like when you get movies about white boys saving jazz or Miley Cyrus twerking, ugh. <laughs> Hell, cultural appropriation is the only thing Taylor and Katie can agree on. Okay, okay, but, but some people look at some of these examples and they think, why the fuss? Because, Trevor, it's when white people discover something that used to be considered ghetto. For example, look at big butts. I always try to. Big butts used to be considered undesirable, but since the Kardashians bought all of theirs, now everybody wants one. Ooh, and don't get me started on dreadlocks. When black people have them, they're discriminated against. They even get fired over it. But when white people have them, clothes fly off the racks. Look at this, is this a fashion show or is she an avatar? Wait, wait, wait go, go back. Was that Kendall Jenner? Baby, it's always Kendall Jenner. Yeah, well, you know what, Dulce, I'm not, gonna, I'm not gonna lie. I hear you and this is interesting because for me it's weird. Where I come from, cultural appropriation isn't really a big deal, right? My, my family's always trying to get my white friends to wear African clothes. They don't view it as white people trying to steal our culture. They think they're embracing it. Mm-hmm, and that's the attitude they got my ancestors over here. These white men are trying to steal us, they're embracing us. Come on, come get on this boat. <laughs> Okay, no, no, but wait, wait, wait. But it's not, it's not just Africa. When Beyonce did that video where she dressed up like an Indian uh, goddess, right? People here were upset, but in India, a lot of people loved it. Okay, now Trevor, Beyonce is a bad example because she's a literal goddess, come on. <laughs> Forget culture, if Beyonce stole my identity, I wouldn't even press charges. I'd be like, thank you. <laughs> it's an honor, here's my pen number, Beyonce. <laughs> Look, Trevor, this is about equality. If minorities were equal, they wouldn't worry about people taking their culture because that wouldn't be all they have. Look, white people, if you're gonna appropriate, take everything. Take the good and the bad. You can take my struggle, too. Get pulled over for no reason, get followed through a store, and the next time there's a Black Lives Matter march, I wanna see you there, Kendall, but don't worry about bringing that Pepsi girl. We drink Sprite. <laughs>